Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about chess training. Uh, and chess training is something I'm becoming more and more obsessed with, and I know that sounds funny coming from me. I, I was a closed grip bencher all that time, but you know, I've come to realize that for me, a big bench requires me to have a big chest, right? Especially a nice wide grip pause bench like this. Uh, you know, for someone who's doing a long range of motion, I'm not running a crazy arch. I'm not trying to bench four inch ranges of motion. I'm trying to bench weight, right? I'm trying to have a real legit bench press. And so in that case, I have to have thick, solid pecs top to bottom, and they're not thick enough. So this is stuff I've been working on. So let's look at, uh, you know, some of the best tools for building your chest. And I like presses. I think presses in general are the way to go for this, only because we need triceps also to bench. We need triceps, and just for me, I don't see the point in taking triceps out of the equation. I really don't. I'm not saying flies are bad. I'm not saying they're useless. I'm just saying from a training economy perspective, I like using presses. But, you know, we need a variety of presses because, again, uh, you know, what is it I've always said? What is the best exercise for any given muscle? Is to train at least two really good exercises they don't you know nothing is really the best there is no best exercise right you're going to have muscle fibers that are only worked in certain positions certain angles like we know this is to do at least two good exercises and that's what i run for myself that's what i run for a lot of my clients we do a lot of benching we do a lot of pause benching but we always do at least one other chest press with it right and you're going to see me demonstrating some of the chest presses that, that I give to clients. Uh, you know, some of them are easy, like you saw me doing a dumbbell bench press. That's very straightforward. It's not equipment intensive. Uh, you know, unless you have a home gym without, without a lot of dumbbells, then maybe. But if you're at a commercial gym, right, you're at a commercial gym, they have dumbbells. You can always find a free flat bench. You can even find a free incline bench. You know, incline dumbbells aren't bad. In fact, I'd say they're pretty good. It's just, you know, getting them into position can be the hard part unless you're doing really high reps. But that's the thing. You know, we look at these other lifts and go, but isn't that what we should be doing for the most part? Right? We fatigued our chest on the bench, so we need to just get a pump and we need to get a stretch. And that's really the only failing of the flat bench. The flat bench can build your entire chest top to bottom. It really can. The problem, though, is getting maximum muscle growth out of it. It's just for that one exercise because we can be a little limited in the range of motion we get because our chest gets in the way. We can't get those deepest length positions, lengthened positions and stretch, stretch overload. It is, it is important if you want to get as big as possible. I'm not saying it's necessary for growth. I'm saying that if we want to get as much growth as possible, we need to have an emphasis on it at least one exercise you know at least one exercise that does and that's where all these other movements come into uh what do you see me doing dumbbells you saw me doing dumbbells well that that's a no-brainer you can get deeper you can get deeper than with a barbell now this also gets silly when you see people who are who are saying well we do partial don't touch the chest on the bench well that can be fine for certain forms of assistance work but again if we're trying to get big we need to get deep you need the lengthened position you need the stretch positions okay so we should generally be pausing on our chest on the flat bench again trying to get that deep position having to use that stretch position to get the weight moving it's always going to have the potential for more pecs these other movements not always so much because with dumbbells we can get a stretch reflex if we're not hitting the chest dumbbells work great they allow some independent movement Okay. They bring a lot to the table. All right, you also saw that McDonald bar, which is a cambered bar. I can't touch my chest with it. I physically cannot do it. I can't do it. I've met a few guys who can, but they're the exception. Also, you see, you see anyone who can move some weight on that bar and touch their chest? They usually have ridiculous pectorals. Ridiculous. I've never seen an exception to that. Like you see a guy who can do like 405 on that bar and touch his chest, I've seen a few. Dude, they have massive pecs. And they have to because that stretch position. 
But, you know, there's a lot of, of, of carryover between that and the dumbbells. In fact, Mike McDonald, who uh, invented that bar, said he did it because he couldn't get heavy enough dumbbells anymore. You know, but then you have the perk of we're not dealing with stabilizing heavy dumbbells. We can still get the stretch position. We don't get the, some of the benefits of the independent movement, which can be useful. It does have its place. But man, we can move some heavier weights safely. We just rack and re-rack it just like a normal bar. You're still going to want to use safeties on that. Trust me, you want to use safety arms on that bar. Because if something goes wrong, you're in a serious compromised stretch position. Uh, it's a good idea. But you can get such a deep stretch with that bar. And you can do it and just re-rack it just like a bench. Like you guys saw me doing higher rep work with the 225 on it. You know, which is not crazy strong. For me, it's pretty difficult after doing a heavy bench set, though. Uh, that bar brings a lot. Then incline, incline benching, and and that's the thing. You know, we can argue all day about how well the incline builds chest. Of you know, some of the research showing minimal lower chest development. You know, potentially, but I've also seen some good experts who are like, eh, it's really tit for tat, meaning it 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 still works lower chest, but it gives us a serious stretch position right and it hits a very very different angle so if we talk about hey needing to combine a couple different movements together i do think the incline is, is a real powerhouse right we know we're going to get some upper chest development out of it we're hitting a very different angle so we're going to hit quite a few different fibers at different positions and ratios than the flat bench does right plus it's a great delt exercise the front delts i've even had one of my guys who's super strong on the incline uh, one of my lifters who I, I put up before a video of him inclining 330 pounds, he's like, I actually feel even my side delts when I incline. He's like, when I do pump work, when I go up to like tens or whatever, and I and I really get a pump, he's like, my side delts get pumped. And and he does have pretty good delts, by the way. But, you know, you would expect that. You're not going to incline over 300 pounds without good delts. I mean, realistically. Uh, you know, you, we expect that. But why do we expect that? Because we know it's a good thing front delt exercise with some carryover to the side delt. We know this. Let me just look at the, the biomechanics of it. But it puts the pecs in a deep stretch position. It also, you know, helps with just some stuff with the, the scapula and just shoulder mobility in general. Uh, the incline, I, I think, is a real powerhouse. And I like these other movements, and I prescribe them regularly, but, you know, I think the incline is never a bad choice unless your shoulders can't handle it. If our shoulders can't handle it, we've got we've got bigger things to worry about. But the incline, it 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 has so much carryover to other stuff. It helps with the bench. A lot of guys, a lot of bodybuilders swear by the aesthetics that it brings. They swear by it, even though it's debated in the research. It's a lot of them are like, I don't know, man. I see an immediate difference when I start doing it. Uh, so you have that. Think about the angles involved. Great bench carryover, but but good potential carryover to overhead work. Good potential carryover to a lot of sports. All right, it's just an all-around good choice. I think if we're going to add, but the others are great too. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.